When the Department of Justice fails, there's not too much recourse that the people of the United States have, but luckily, we've got Larry Klayman and FreedomWatchUSA.org. Larry, welcome to the show. It looks like you've got a bit of a pandemic beard growing. Yes, I've decided that for good luck, I'm growing a beard and I'm not going to cut it until this virus is under control. And maybe I need to go incognito having sued the Chinese communist leadership. So this is my disguise, I suspect. <laughs> I think people might be able to recognize you, but uh, we spoke right. last week about this. It's a class action suit, right? Why don't you remind people of exactly what the complaint is and what's happening? Well, we actually have four lawsuits in county. The first one I filed was in Dallas, Texas. I filed it for a photo shop named Buzz Photos who was put out of business by this pandemic, by what the Chinese did. That is the Chinese leadership in Beijing. It's a class action. We already have over 700 putative plaintiffs, and we hope to get more. And people can go to freedomwatchusa.org, freedomwatchusa.org, and sign up, give us your contact information. We'll let you know whether we qualify. Now, it's important because, you see, what we're doing is what our government won't do. And that is we're holding the Chinese communists accountable for the massive damage they have caused to our country. And this is something that needs to be done because why should the American people have to bail out failing businesses, people who've lost their jobs, trillions and trillions of dollars when it's the Chinese that should pay? And the theory of that lawsuit, and I'll get into it briefly because it also applies to another lawsuit that we brought recently, is that the Chinese manufactured this virus in a lab in Wuhan, China, most likely a bioweapons lab. And because of that, they don't have any immunity from suit because that's an outlawed weapon. It's in effect a terrorist weapon, and therefore they can't hide behind any veil of immunity. After I filed this lawsuit, it got worldwide coverage and publicity, and I started getting contacted from lawyers and people throughout the world, first from India, then from places like Poland and Sri Lanka and Argentina and Israel. And last week, uh, I, we acquired some really great Israeli counsel. I hope to have them on your show uh, shortly. Uh, we filed a similar lawsuit to what was filed in Dallas, Texas, in Jerusalem, Israel. The law firm is from Tel Aviv. And in Israel, it moves very, very quickly, even quicker than in this country. We'll be in a hearing probably in, in several months three-judge panel, and that's extremely uh, hard-hitting. You know, Israel's a small country, and Israel could be destroyed very quickly, much quicker than the United States, over what's going on. Now, there's another lawsuit that I brought because I filed a Freedom of Information Act case against the intelligence agencies, the CIA, the NSA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. You know, Jason, while they were able to spy on hundreds of millions of Americans with their illegal mass surveillance, for which we got two preliminary injunctions and a judge calling that unconstitutional and Orwellian, they obviously have the capability to have known that there was a bioweapons facility in Wuhan, that the virus was released. And the question is, why didn't they inform the president sooner? Why did they sit on it? And we know that these intelligence agencies have a deep state. The Obama and Clinton loyalists are still in control. Obama, Clapper, their people are still in there. The Obama intelligence stars. So we filed a Freedom of Information Act request to find out what the intelligence agencies and FBI knew. And when they knew it, they didn't respond. We filed a lawsuit in Washington, D.C. to get that documentation. And then for my good friend and client, Ben Stein, the famous actor, comedian, writer, financial analyst. We filed a lawsuit against the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, for his draconian order. He was the first one to issue it, telling people that they had to stay at home, where if they ventured out, they'd be arrested and thrown in prison. We're not against, and Ben isn't against, uh, social distancing and good health, washing your hands and staying away from people. But if you combine the massive bailout where the American people are being put on the dole, where this country is being turned into a socialist state in rapid order with these dictatorial orders, what do you have? You have the onset of a socialist, communist, Soviet-style gulag, and that's unacceptable. 
So we filed that lawsuit in Sacramento, and that's going forward. And I suspect we're going to have several other lawsuits in the near future in other countries. After I was contacted by India, Jason, the Indians filed a criminal complaint in The Hague as well. And that's another case that we brought recently. We filed a complaint claiming crimes against humanity and violation of WHO, World Health Organization, notification provisions in Holland. Uh, when I was a young lawyer, I actually studied at the Hague Academy of International Law, so I know the procedures. Mm -hmm. And within 48 hours, I got a response from the court saying that we are processing your complaint. And see, if there's a, if there's a bright side to all of this, and there's you know really nothing terribly bright about it, but it's bringing the world together. And it is now an international effort. I'm amassing a team of lawyers in the United States for our class action and other lawsuits here, and also coordinating lawyers overseas. And that's why if people can go to freedomwatchusa.org, contribute to our cause, this is gonna be very, very expensive. And if, this is the lead in, this is the segue. Our Justice Department is doing nothing as usual. Attorney General Bill Barr, who took a dive on indicting Comey, indicting Andrew McCabe, indicting the lovebird Struck and Page, indicting Brennan and Clapper, Obama's intelligence czars, indicting, frankly, the current head of the FBI who's covered this whole thing up, and others in this case. He was asked last night, and, and you can play a clip because we got this, we want to show the people, by Laura Ingram on Fox, what are you going to do about the damage that the the Chinese have done, the communist Chinese. And he says, well, we're seriously going after intellectual property fraud. I mean, what a joke, what a cop out. We don't have a justice department. So if you can play that, I, I want the viewers to see it because we're your justice department. Our government is sweeping this under the carpet. Yeah, now I've got the clip here, but I apologize, Larry, I may not have queued it up to the exact spot. Let's just give a listen for a while because people should go to Fox and watch this clip. I saw it last night. I have to say, Laura Ingram was and is brilliant. Uh, William Barr, not so much. He seems to be sort of like stuttering, stammering, not really too confident in his answers. Let's play just a little bit of this for everybody here to listen to. to. After this limited period, to ensure that our civil liberties are balanced properly against the need to protect the public. Well, um, you know, gen generally speaking, there are there are occasions where liberties have to be uh, restricted during certain emergency such as war uh, or in this case a potentially devastating uh, pandemic uh, but they have to be balanced whatever steps you take have to be balanced against the civil liberties of the American people and it cannot be I mean, he, he loves to talk about how they're going to infringe on our civil civil liberties you were talking about the surveillance state Fauci earlier today was talking about surveillance coronavirus testing so We've got a comment from Granny Gear, who's watching us on YouTube, Larry. She tells me that people in Greensboro have been arrested for not wearing a COVID-19 mask. It's pretty troubling. I think that our civil liberties, we talk about them being eroded, but they're sort of essentially gone. We heard William Barr sort of stuttering, stammering, tripping over his own words at these questions about how civil liberties will be balanced. I don't think it's at the forefront of his thoughts. No, he hadn't even thought it through. God knows what he's doing. I've been saying he's hiding under his desk with a mask, most likely. <laughs> I mean, this guy is scared of his shadow. And, you know, I love the president, but I've got to be critical here because it's not enough to say the Chinese virus. It's not enough to say I'm good friends with President Z. It's not enough to say I have great respect for China. You know, I have great respect for the Chinese people. They're good people. And I got to tell you, about 30 percent of the plaintiffs who've signed up for our class action in Texas are Chinese Americans or Asian Americans. They came here for freedom. They escaped, mm -hmm. many of them, that communist dictatorship. This is an evil dictatorship which persecutes its own people far beyond the 10,000 plus they killed at Tiananmen Square in 1991. And don't be fooled by Xi's nice smile. That's a facade. This guy is a killer you know, in, in, a, in the league of Adolf Hitler and Fidel Castro. 
And maybe this got out of this lab by accident, but the Chinese are taking advantage of it. This is decimating the Western world. It's bringing the United States to its knees. And of course, they claim they don't have any further uh, infections to any great extent. And that probably is because they know how this virus was engineered. They probably already have a vaccine for it. And they're very happy to you know, exclude the United States from that uh, luxury of being able to uh, defend ourselves against this attack. And that's what it is. It's an attack by a hostile foreign power. Yeah, there's a lot of people who share that opinion, Larry. I'm certainly one of them. There's all these sort of peripheral stories and accounts that we've heard about, including, I mean, maybe this is a good thing coming from the Department of Justice, but this guy, uh, Charles Lieber, who was a Harvard University professor, who was indicted in January. How come we haven't heard the president talking about this? What do we know about what's going on with Lieber and the two Chinese students who failed to declare on their visa applications that they were members of the People's Army of China? Well, here's the question we have to ask. Of course, the president's going light on China right now, <clears throat> excuse me, because we're dependent on China for medicines. We let our industry go over there and we have many other industries that are also vulnerable. I also have to ask the question, I don't want to sound like a leftist, but does the president have Chinese investment in some of his companies, uh, the Trump Corporation? That needs to be asked right now. I don't care if I love the guy or not. Personally, I want him to win the next election. I can't say that as, as the head of Freedom Watch, and I think he's done a great job. But does he have a conflict of interest here with China? That needs to be checked out. Certainly, Joe Biden did, for sure. Took lots of money from China. That's why he's so soft on him. But why isn't the president being more aggressive? And what the president should do right now is freeze all of these Chinese assets. Because when we get a jury verdict, it won't be that hard to collect if the money is in US banks and securities, certificates of deposit and other investments. He should be freezing it right now. Now, this is a segue. We'll get back to, to this guy, Lieber. I don't know that much about it. But you, know, you have these hacks. Uh, Laura Ingram did a good interview on Fox News, but I've been very critical of the cable news networks, and Fox started this with their charts and their chyron showing people dying every minute on the right-hand right. side. It's almost like those billboards, the national debt going up, right. and it's scaring, it's scaring the hell out of people. It's, it's dividing families to the point that families won't interact with each other anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks they're going to die any minute, and this kind of panic is very counterproductive. I mean, we're, we're now on the deck of the Titanic as it's sinking, you have to stay calm and not panic. And, and Fox is making money hand over fist as is CNN and MSNBC, because this boosts viewership, it boosts advertising dollars. The guests on these shows, I mean, the hosts are smiling. They know they're probably gonna get raises next year. They're not gonna be fired like the rest of this country. They're not in any fin financial deprivation and it's irresponsible. And then you've get, the, get these hacks like Andrew Napolitano, so-called judge from New Jersey. God knows what he was a judge of, but he's become extremely anti-Trump. Uh, he's a never Trumper. And going way back when, when I was running Judicial Watch, he would diss on everything we did and, and we would win the cases and I would just kind of laugh. And he gives an interview yesterday, and this is Fox's retaliation, I'm sure, for my being critical of them in a number of ways over the years. And he says, oh, you can't sue China itself. You can sue the corporations. That is so stupid. A first year law student would know that you don't sue corporations for something the communist leadership did. And they don't have any immunity because they have violated international treaties. They lose that immunity. Then he says, our case at the International Criminal Court isn't going to work because the United States isn't a signatory. Well, the International Criminal Court doesn't care who's a signatory. They have worldwide jurisdiction over China and the United States and everyone. And in fact, years ago, they prosecuted General Pinochet in Chile mm. and convicted him. He would have gone to prison, but for the fact that he had the good fortune to die shortly after that happened. <laughs> so I don't know who this guy Napolitano is, but he's a complete charlatan and a fraud. And now he's, he's out there pontificating as if he knows something and he's simply a fool, I have to say that. And he's no friend of Trump anymore. He's been doing everything he can to get Trump removed from office. He was advocating impeachment and everything else. So just mm -hmm. a total clown. And that's the problem is that people need accurate information. They need the truth. 
We, the people, need to stand up. We need to do it for ourselves. Our government is not going to do it for us. And our bank accounts are being emptied out, emptied out the treasury, and we're going to have to pay the piper back in the future. Our kids are going to live in abject par- poverty to pay back these trillions of dollars that we're now doling out, turning ourselves into a socialist country. And if I, I may add, I know I'm rambling here, but the left loves this. You know, China's their friend. They obviously yeah. are admir- admirers of Mao and of Marx and Trotsky and Lenin and Linsky and the rest of them. But they see this as an opportunity with the American people becoming dependent on government money to squeeze capitalism out, to squeeze God out, to make God the government. And this is their dream come true to socialize this country. And it's all caused by China, the leadership there, and they have to pay for what they've done. Yeah, and I'm with you, Larry. I'm a little skeptical of this international criminal court because it seems to be somehow affiliated with the UN which is also affiliated with the WHO. And I want to turn our attention to that. because well, let, me, it seems, let me add one yeah. thing here. I don't care who they're affiliated with. If they're going to indict the Chinese, that's good. And, you know, I'm not, I wasn't in favor of U.S. membership either, but let's use what we've got right now because sure. we don't have an attorney general with any guts that'll do the job. And I'll tell you something, you know, the left and liberals and the Europeans and the rest of them, when their ox is gored, they will do something. And Europe is suffering even more than we are right now per capita. So I think there's an excellent chance that they start an investigation and ultimately prosecute uh, these Chinese criminals. I'm hopeful that that's the case. And I fully agree that utilizing the resources that are available is certainly the only option. I want to point out something interesting because I've observed this on a small scale with the social engineers that operate in social media and try to suppress your messaging, my messaging. They work by essentially the same playbook. I can't necessarily find a picture of President Xi hanging out with Anthony Fauci, but he's definitely good buddies with this diabolical criminal, Dr. Tedros, who's the director general of the World Health Organization. And of course, Tedros is hanging out with Fauci all the time. So they don't need Fa- direct, sorry. And Fauci donated heavily to Clinton and Obama. He's no oh friend. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, people are talking about democratic socialism like it's some kind of good thing. I think you can jam a couple buzzwords together these days and people who don't know what you're talking about might be attracted to it. But in the 60s, I'm sure you recall, Larry, I wasn't even around, but the Students for Democratic Socialism evolved into the Weather Underground, a violent terrorist organization that was vowing to destroy the United States of America. Seems like this COVID-19 pandemic as it were, has gone a real long way to uh, achieving some of that destruction from a financial standpoint, a psychological standpoint. What do you think about all these relationships here? Well, it's like the relationships of the radical left in this country. And obviously, you know, it's interesting because when I brought this lawsuit instinctively, the left says, oh, there's no proof that Mr. Clayman knows that it's a bioweapon. Well, they don't know otherwise either, do they? But if a conservative says it, it must be wrong. Now, they see the opportunity (laughs) here to seize control of this country. And even though, you know, they are not aligned, technically speaking, with the communist Chinese, these are their heroes. Mao, Marx, Trotsky, Lenin, uh, and others, and Linsky and others in in our current, uh, current climate here. So there's an affinity. It's a little bit like all these radical groups radical blacks, radical Jewish left, you know, we're Jewish too, so I don't mean that in an anti-Semitic way, but the Jewish left's very destructive. Radical Muslims, radical feminists. Alinsky uh, was ra- Jewish. Radical atheists, yeah, well, the worst anti-Semites in world history happen to have been Jewish, as a matter of mm. fact. And, uh, you know, Marx was an anti-Semite, so was Trotsky. And uh, Soros, of course, is Jewish, he's an anti-Semite. Bernie Schwartz, uh, Bernie Sanders, rather. Uh, it's <laughs> Bernie Schwartz is the, sounds like a dentist. <laughs> well, he, was, he was the head of Loral. But yeah, uh, he's a self-hating Jew, Bernie uh, Sanders. And they're the biggest threat to the Jewish people is the Jewish left. And of course, they're trying to remove Netanyahu in Israel, the Israeli Jewish left. So all of these groups are getting together because they see a commonality. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. And much like Ocasio-Cortez with Ilham Omar, with Rashida Tlaib, 
with Bernie Sanders. I mean, and should they take control of this country and, and they're getting dangerously close to doing that, then they'll all start fighting with each other because there's no affinity, for instance, between feminists and Muslims. Muslims would like, you know, have don't give any rights to women or there's no affinity with radical gay groups and Muslims. There's just a couple examples because the Muslims would like to see all the, the gays dead, as a matter of fact. So this is what's going to happen. This country is going to be torn apart, at it seems. And that's why we're fighting on behalf of the American people. That's why I need your support. Go to freedomwatchusa.org freedomwatchusa.org, sign up for these class actions, donate with tax deductible contributions. This is expensive. And without tooting my own horn too much, who but Larry Klayman would even thought have bring, thought to bring this case? I've been critical of other public interest groups, one of which I founded. You know, documents are great, but you know, hard hitting cases are what counts. And this is an example of the difference between Freedom Watch and Judicial Watch today is that we stuck our neck out here and we need your help right now. Now, Larry, you raised an interesting point because you said that when you came out with this, the immediate reaction from the left was that there's no proof or whatever it is that they said about the allegation that this is a bioweapon. But correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it true that a properly pled and effective lawsuit could actually lead us to the evidence that it is or is not a bioweapon? In principle, that's correct. Now, here's here's the interesting thing, Jason. You know, I've been railing about federal judges. This was filed in federal court because federal court has jurisdiction. And this case is uniting people. And I don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican, or establishment or non-establishment. When your ox is getting gored, I think there's going to be a tremendous desire by the court to let this case go forward. And Texas is a fairly conservative place with a Circuit Court, the appellate court, which is even more conservative, the Fifth uh, Circuit. So I'm very confident this thing's going to go forward. And when we do, yes, we have the opportunity for discovery. But also there are experts out there. There are whistleblowers out there right now that I know of that have information that this was a bioweapon. But even if it wasn't, if it, was, it has been manufactured, the left is saying, oh, you know, the left who, who worships the communist regime in China, they're saying, oh, this just came from a bat, B-A-T, no. bat, okay? <laughs> well, it could have come from a bat. So you extract the virus from the bat and you engineer it, you manipulate it to make it deadly towards human beings. And this film that I think you watched, I sent it to you, it's up on our website, freedomwatchusa.org, the Epic Times, excellently done, came out yesterday, goes through this with a number of experts, medical experts and uh, intelligence experts, and they conclude that this was a manufactured uh, virus in a Chinese lab and most likely a bioweapon. You know, we all have bioweapons, all these countries. America has bioweapons too. It's illegal. We still have them. Look at what happened after 9 11 when anthrax got loose. Right. That was deter it was determined that was manufactured in a lab in Virginia. And then the idiot uh, George Bush, the dad, and Rumsfeld and Cheney gave it to Saddam Hussein to use against the Iranians at the time. Yeah. They were fighting a war and it got loose. Well, you know, all countries have these weapons. And there's another thing that's interesting is that several weeks ago it was reported that the Israelis are the closest to having a vaccine to take care of it. Now, why do you think that is? My hypothesis is that the Israelis knew that someday this would be used against them. And they were developing, and of course, their intelligence agency is far better than ours. The Mossad is much better than the CIA. It's the number one intelligence agency in the world for Israeli survival, is that they knew that they were going to be hit with this and they prepared. And, and the bigger question here is, where the hell has our government been since 9-11? What have they done? Playing patty cakes on Capitol Hill and in the executive branch? We knew this was going to happen someday, and we did nothing. We thought it was going to happen after 9-11. So as far as I'm concerned, the leaders that are responsible, they ought to be indicted by the International Criminal Court, too, for, for negligent homicide, because they have failed the American people, and they should all be thrown out of office, every single one of them. Larry, I think a lot of people might conclude that those that are closest to a vaccine might know more about the aspects of this being a biological weapon. And I'm personally moving away from this idea of 
you know, countries, this country did that. We've got these globalist, internationalist oligarchs. Many people believe that Bill Gates is closely tied to this whole thing. He's been adamantly pushing this vaccine concept with a implantable RFID chip that, according to his proposal, every human on Earth would have this chip injected in their hand and it would store your inoculation history. I think the big concern, first of all, is that we have no idea what's going into these Bill Gates vaccines. There's a lot of reports of vaccine injuries around the world, particularly in in third world countries that Bill Gates and his foundation have sought to quote unquote help. Charles Ortel has given us literally years worth of research and investigation into criminal money laundering, tax evasion, all kinds of things going on between the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Clinton Foundation. Will Bill Gates be a component of any of these class action lawsuits? Well, if evidence comes forward, yes, he could be. I don't know what you're saying, Jason, and I don't hazard a, ga hazard, hazard a guess, but I do know one thing is that Bill Gates is an ultra leftist and he's, you know, sympathetic, sympathetic to these causes. And it's something that, you know, we maybe should look into. Mm -hmm. But right now, I think we need to focus on the very evil communist regime in Beijing. That's where it began. And as I said earlier, I want the American people to know, do not take it out on Chinese Americans and Asian Americans. They're generally speaking, hardworking people. Uh, they Chinese build our railroads, as a matter of fact, going way back when. And I can tell you, look at who is signing up for our case. 30% uh, plus Chinese and Asian Americans. I mean, Chinese people are good people, but this government is evil. It must be removed ultimately. And I'm afraid that our government is rolling over to it right now and has been blackmailed into submission. Yeah. Well, the comments are erupting with regard to Bill Gates. And they, people want me to let you know that Bill Gates was, in addition to being, you know, down with Dr. Tedros, like AC is down with OJ, he's hanging out with uh, Jeffrey Epstein, who was affiliated, according to the former uh, labor secretary. What was that guy's name? Uh, Alex... Uh, it escapes me right now. Well, look, I've I've sued Gates's companies. I've got several lawsuits against uh, Microsoft and Google and the rest of them. So he's no friend of mine, believe me. And one of those lawsuits was supposed to have an oral argument on April 15th. The D.C. Circuit took it under advisement. That's where uh, we're seeking uh, antitrust relief against the social media companies for discriminating against conservatives and in, in restraint of trade and in monopolization. And that case will be decided now on the briefs, but he's no friend of mine. And his Google YouTube has discriminated against judicial uh, Freedom Watch, Freudian slip. Uh, we haven't gone past 45,000 subscribers now for five or six years. I mean, obviously something is going on when we were making all this news and doing all these different things. So, yeah, he's he's an evil person. And there's no doubt yeah. about it. And just to clarify, I think Bill Gates is more closely associated with uh, Microsoft than Google, but they are all in a similar kind yeah, of right. vein. These are individuals who have as much wealth and power in some cases as entire countries. The guy I was thinking of is the now disgraced former U.S. Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta, who said that he was instructed to leave Epstein alone because he's intelligence. I just can't get past the notion that there's all these interconnects. Countries seem to be less important than corporate affiliations and political affiliations. And along the lines of what is happening to Freedom Watch's YouTube site, I do want to remind people that right now they can watch a simulcast of our live video here by searching for Freedom Watch on YouTube. And I agree with you, Larry. I'm very surprised that you're stuck around 44.7 thousand subscribers with all this awesome crowdsource the truth content getting on there you should be well over a hundred thousand by now but uh, it's a serious concern they're silencing our ability to use this platform they're really violating their own terms of service they can change it at whatever time they want totally demonetized crowdsource the truth earlier this week or perhaps last week they're trying to stifle voices they're trying to suppress freedom of speech and we're seeing now during this crisis whether it's caused by a biological weapon, a natural pandemic, 
or a planned event, it is having a crushing effect on the U.S. economy and anyone who is trying to ask questions about it or do anything other than fear monger is really being suppressed. Well, that's right. And, you know, uh, you know, I do not watch Fox News anymore except to quickly turn it on to find out what's going on, where the stock market is or whatever. I look at CNN, MSNBC, too, but I don't want to watch them because they're profiting by this. I mean, they're acting like whores, as in my book. They've always been whores, frankly, and it's disgusting. And scaring people to this degree uh, is causing a lot of social problems, emotional distress. Uh, um, undoubtedly, there's suicides out there. Yeah. And, and yeah. to have a chart on the right-hand side showing how people are dying minute by minute, what can be more despicable than that? What's the point? What's the point? And the person who runs Fox News today is an evil person as well. His name is Lachlan Murdoch. He's the son of Rupert Murdoch. Now, Rupert was just amoral. He just wanted to make money. But Lachlan is a leftist. And that's why you see Fox going left, except for a few primetime hosts. And but for the fact that they're raking in money, they'd be gone too. They eventually will be gone, including Hannity. You, you, Fox is going left. And you know this is the same guy that won't do anything for my client, Laurie Loon, who was severely sexually abused by Roger Ailes, who, who herself is at the point of suicide, having been destroyed all these years, covered up all the women that were abused, put in Suzanne Scott as a CEO. She was the facilitator of Ailes. She actually was getting hotel rooms for Ailes to work his, uh, his evil in Laurie Loon. And she becomes the CEO of Fox. And then she has the gall to go out and give an interview to the LA Times saying, I knew nothing about this like she's some Nazi executioner. And that, that drives Laurie into a tizzy to the point where, you know, she's being called a liar. We brought a lawsuit. It wound up in front of a, a Trump judge who obviously likes Fox News. She dismissed it. It's up on appeal. But Fox, you know, because they're supposed to be on our side, I take it more personally. Uh, it, it has always been the most unethical cable network out there. And I wrote about it in my book, Wars. They're, they're totally unethical. Yeah. I mean, I've always felt that these corporate owned, corporate advertiser driven news sources can't be trusted because obviously they're beholden to their sponsors. That's why I've created this micro sponsorship technique whereby the viewers are the only sponsors of the show. People can go to subscribestar.com slash crowdsource the truth or patreon.com slash crowdsource the truth and sponsor this program. And that way they know there's no undue economic influence coming from some outside source where perhaps they don't know what the agenda is. It's the same way that you run freedomwatchusa.org. You're relying on the citizens of the United States who are sick of the inaction of the Department of Justice. I mean, why didn't William Barr bring some sort of criminal indictment or investigation against China in the way that you have. We haven't heard anything about this guy Lieber. We haven't heard anything about the ongoing RCMP investigation into the Chinese Canadian scientist that was escorted out of the Winnipeg Level 4 Bio Research Lab. I want to turn your attention for a moment, Larry, to a couple of other leftist dopes, one of which is basically <laughs> running New York City into the ground. The other is sitting in his house claiming to be inflicted with this potentially deadly disease. Looks pretty okay to me, Larry. I mean, you know, when I have a 103 or 4 degree fever and can't breathe well and the demon comes at night, I'm not going to be smiling like a jerk on CNN. And he's constantly Constantly ribbing his brother. Have you listened to any of this? It's like yeah, the most contentious. It's terrible. You know, the Cuomos are very good on their feet. They're very articulate. Their dad, Mario, was a brilliant orator. Uh, people can be deceived by them. They've got a number of unsavory connections. That's why they never went for the presidency, any of them. Uh, and, you know, as far as uh, Chris Cuomo is concerned, you know, I doubt, you know, frankly, that he has. COVID-19, it's a great marketing technique, makes it more interesting for the viewers. But the, the brother is whoring it up in, in auditioning to becoming president. And I gotta tell you, I mean, the guy is impressive on his feet, he is, but he talks too much. He's starting to wear thin uh, with the people that listen to him. But compared to Biden, he sounds like a genius. 
Well, that's, I mean, I've got some uh, old furniture over here that's uh, pretty smart compared to Joe Biden. It's been sort of a gift for Joe Biden that he doesn't have to walk around saying stupid stuff now that everybody's locked in their houses and not paying attention to him. But uh, I'm very concerned about some of the things that um, Andrew Cuomo has been doing. It seemed like a real rush to get lots of money and contracts to the Javits Center, to the Carpenters Union, to whatever kind of union is involved in bringing in that giant hospital ship that there seems to be a question if that ship can handle open heart surgery. I was watching a documentary on these naval hospital ships and while they're extremely impressive, the documentary said that they can't do open heart surgery. Now, I spoke to a retired Navy doctor who said that it's probably because these ships are intended for people injured in battle and heart surgery is not usually one of those things, but it could also be due to the movement of the ship. I tried to ask this question and they wouldn't answer it. There's been this whole thing about ventilators, if there are enough, not too many. Can you speak for a second, Larry, about this 2014 National Defense Authorization Act signed by Barack Obama that enabled this Smith-Munt modernization legalizing the use of propaganda against the people of the United States. Wouldn't this act make it legal and even potentially the patriotic duty of a rag birdcage liner like the New York Times to deliberately lie to the people of the United States and the readers of their publication if they're instructed to do that? Well, and that, that's what they've been doing, instructed or not, Jason. I'm not an expert on that act. I will look into it. But yes, I mean, it is a propaganda campaign that's going on right now to shake the money tree. And the money tree is being shaken. Uh, everybody in this country, virtually, can be on the dole now in one manner, shape, or form. Once we go this route, it will never go back to where it was. Actually, Cuomo's right about that, Andrew Cuomo. And they know that. Look at Obamacare. When you gave all those goodies out, you know, however bad that act was, even the Republicans wouldn't repeal it. So we are headed into an extreme form of socialism, of government dependence. Uh, the God will become the God of the government, and the people will be dependent on the government. Couple that with these draconian measures, these tyrannical measures that leave your house and you'll be arrested and thrown yeah. in prison. Yeah. And what do you have? you have the former Soviet Union. And that's really scary, extremely scary. And then couple that with the fact that our government will not stand up for us with the Chinese, but instead wants us to pay for all of this. This is not free money. This has to be paid back. And it's also gonna raise interest rates significantly to the point where private citizens are gonna have a hard time borrowing money because money's gonna be scarce because it's being used by the government. And our national debt is skyrocketing. And that's why we've sued China for over $20 trillion. They should have to pay for this. I mean, where is the president of the United States? He's always been direct with the American people, but it looks like he's scared of the communist Chinese leadership. Hmm. Well, I personally feel he's probably being blackmailed by the same people who <laughs> are able to make sure that uh, Boris Johnson contracts COVID-19, but that's speculation on my part, and I know we don't want to get into sort of that area. Uh, Larry, the other thing I wanted to ask you about while we're talking about suppression of freedom of speech and uh, unfair treatment of conservatives, there was a development, I think, last week in Laura Loomer's case against Facebook. Can you talk about that at all? The development is, is that uh, they were writing articles, the media, that we were going into an oral argument on her case. It's a very important case. And in incredibly enough, Jason, we have the support of the government of the District of Columbia, perhaps the most leftist government in the United States. Uh, and they filed amicus briefs in that case because we included a count in our original complaint that it was political discrimination. District of Columbia has a statute which prevents political discrimination in public fora. And consequently, we have a very good chance of winning that case, if for no other reason than on those grounds. So this is a very powerful case. People are starting to see its merit. But because of the virus, the judges of the D.C. Circuit canceled the oral argument. They're going to decide the case on the briefs. Now, I'm going to file a motion 
suggesting that we should do the oral argument by Skype or, or Zoom. Right. Maybe you can you can set it up for them. Sure. But this is I, you have to laugh. The judges, you know, always take care of themselves first, and they're afraid of, you know, of contamination. And I understand that. But there's a way around this, and this is a super important case. And they should, uh, we should be able to be in front of them so they can ask questions. And I'm I'm confident that. Uh, this case will come out hopefully positively. Yeah, and it's too bad that big league politics didn't contact me. I could have redone this graphic with Facebook on the tape, but this is something I created for Laura a while ago. <laughs> now, so this has really affected your industry as well, because as I know from Steele v. Goodman, uh, that case was also delayed by the coronavirus. Really, no courts are open right now, are they? Very few. Some are having uh, oral arguments by phone. That's very rare, but basically everything shut down. In Washington, D.C., everything shut down until the end of May. Uh, the courts there, California, same thing. Florida, very similar. Uh, things have ground to a halt, and people are in a crouched position waiting for the, the sky to fall. They're in a crouched position waiting for the hidden tiger, Larry. So aren't people being denied their right to access the courts? I mean, if something happens right now and you need to sue somebody, you're sort of out of luck. What about statutes well, of limitations? Right. All these things. There's so many unanswered questions and complications from just shutting the government off based on what a doctor says. You know, I, of course, am not a lawyer. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even an engineer. But I've worked with many people in those fields. And what I've learned over the years is that each of those fields deal in uh, elements of the unknown. You know, you might have a fantastic case, but there's so many aspects of it that are beyond your control that are you know, can go one way or another. Usually if you ask a lawyer what the outcome is going to be, if you ask a doctor what the outcome is going to be, if you ask an engineer what the outcome is going to be, an honest one will tell you that they do not know. So all of these doctors who are guaranteeing that next week is going to be hell week, how do they know unless they're, you know, pulling the trigger on a biological weapon or know somebody who is, it's completely disingenuous on its face. Well, doctors, I mean, also there's the mentality is that they're always going to give you the worst case scenario. It's not for the doctors to decide whether the country should be shut down or not. They give you the medical opinion. Now, this particular doctor, Fauci, apparently is a heavy contributor to the Democrats. So he doesn't like Trump. He wouldn't mind seeing Trump gone, I'm sure. I'm sure he voted for Hillary Clinton. So we have to take everything with a grain of salt. But this is not their role to decide whether government should be open or not, whether our, our country should be open. But this is a government mentality. You know, I worked in government. I was at the Justice Department in uh, law school. I worked for the International Trade Commission. I worked for the European Union as a, as a stagiaire, as an intern and the competition director. The government people don't want to be blamed. And these governors are worried that they won't be reelected unless they do everything they can to avoid, you know, any kind of health disaster in their state. And they went overboard and they're issuing these tyrannical orders basically to protect their own backside. You know, that's the typical mentality of a government worker or a politician, don't blame me. But you know what, life is full of risks and you have to take some risks. And the president was right, the cure is worse than the disease at this point. And there has to be some rational thinking, at least after a couple of weeks as to what we're gonna do in this country. Already we're at 17% unemployment. I mean, already, you know, we've lost 30% approximately of the stock market. And this country could easily go into a Great Depression if this thing continues the way it is. Yeah, I think we could experience a financial crisis unlike anything we've seen before. I just wanted to add, Larry, that not only did Dr. Fauci probably vote for Hillary Clinton, he's actually in the WikiLeaks, I think sending an email to Cheryl Mills or somebody like that, uh, effusive in his praise of Hillary Clinton. And I want to let you know that Aon is joining us in Discord chat. Tells me that B Dell Bigtree's latest show states that the United States is planning to lift the lockdown on only those who test negative for antibodies. And that, um, you know, there's a reference to a St. Louis, Missouri cop who said that people would be tested daily and would need to wear badges. 
So Larry, just like in Nazi Germany, to identify who the Juden were, you're going to have to wear a badge that's a mark of shame if you've had the coronavirus or haven't been inoculated. This is absolute insanity. It's beyond insanity. I mean, we're, we're getting into Atlas Shrugged land, but way beyond it uh, currently. And you know what happened in, in Atlas Shrugged, the industrialists and others went off to wage a revolution. We're entering into a revolutionary period. Couple that with the fact that states are not allowing people to purchase firearms to defend themselves. There's going to be a lot of theft, a lot of uh, violent conduct here. People are desperate. And again, it gets back to the cable networks, including Fox, getting people to uh, working them into a state of panic, which is going to cause people to turn against each other. And of course, the government is fomenting that with its various edicts and policies. Yeah. And I think a lot of crowdsource the truth viewers are very concerned about this concept of a mandatory vaccine. We've seen this implemented for school children in, I guess, California. You're going to know more about this than I do. What are people's legal rights with regard? Like, I don't want a vaccine from Bill Gates, no matter what. I'll take my risks with the crony virus. But this guy is psychotic with the chip, the vaccines, all this. What happens if they decide? I mean, they'll just override our constitutional rights and inject us with whatever they want? Well, there'll be a lot of court challenges, but you know, God save us with that because the judges are in the hip pocket of the establishment. You know, I, as a young boy, I remember that when I was in grade school, they gave us the Sabine uh, vaccine in effect. It came on a little sugar cube to cure uh, polio, okay? But we weren't required to take it. Our family could make that decision. In school, it came for free. And now they'll ram it down your throat. Yeah. So, you know, things have changed a lot. And uh, the government is getting more and more and more powerful, you know, every moment during this uh, pandemic. Right. And certainly when something comes, quote, for free, <laughs> somebody's paying for it. It would be the United States government that would pay for 330 million vaccines and then give them out at schools, make them free at CVS, pharmaceutical companies, companies like things that Bill Gates, George Soros, all these guys are invested in would undoubtedly be benefiting from, you know, worldwide vaccinations. Somebody's paying for that stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, if it's, it's okay to do that. I think that's a, a valid use of taxpayer money, but you shouldn't be forced to take it. I mean, I've had doctors that want me to take uh, a vaccine against uh, uh, shingles. I won't take it. I mean, I just don't want to have it. I'll probably get shingles if I take it. Right. But you should have a choice <laughs> of whether you want to take it or not. Yeah. You know, and I had chicken pox when I was a kid, so I guess I'm in that so you've got the Zoster virus in you. See, this is the other thing that we're being deceived by these doctors. Whenever someone is a medical doctor, a technologist, these guys have knowledge that the average person just can't challenge. They don't even know what these guys are talking about. So they can really massage this information and how they present it to you. I mean, earlier in the broadcast, you were talking about this Johns Hopkins COVID-19 you know, heat map or whatever this thing is. It's certainly dramatic. I mean, it looks like some kind of like war room style thing where the world is turning red and we've got all these growing numbers of deaths. I, it feels to me like three, four weeks ago, we were hearing from idiots like Fauci that these were going to be numbers in the hundreds of thousands, the 16,000 total deaths in the United States. And that's a huge number. Obviously, even one death, if it's someone who, uh, you know, is a family member or a loved person, that's horrendous. But the fact of the matter is people die every day. People die in hospitals every day. People die of flu. People die of complications from other things. We're not getting Motorcycle this kind of- accidents, car right. accidents, smoking. Yeah, I mean, it's a cost benefit approach. You don't want to be callous, but you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, which is what we're doing right now. You know, I don't want to get two way out, Jason. You and I have a tendency to be branded as conspiracy theorists, but this could be a science fiction movie. I mean, if not the Chinese, then who did it? Space aliens? Do they want to inhabit the Earth? I mean, this is the absurdity of some of the things that are out there right now in terms of not facing reality. The reality is the Chinese are responsible for this. The right. communist Chinese, not space aliens, okay? Although it'll probably be some movies or, or a series about that. 
and they need to be held accountable. And the president's dropping the ball on this. I understand that he's concerned that we need imports of medicines from China. I understand he's trying to break away from the dependency, and that's really good. But he needs to get tougher with China. And the least th- least he can do right now is let Freedom Watch do its job with the American people and freeze the Chinese assets so they can't remove them from this country. So I urge everybody not just to go to Freedom Watch's website at freedomwatchusa.org and sign up for our class actions, but uh, contribute with tax deductible contributions so we can hire lawyers to really fight this battle, more of lawyers, but also contact the White House and tell the president to get tougher on China and to support Freedom Watch. His attorney general should be joining our lawsuit and supporting us. We've already, you know, Pave the way for him. Where is he? It's yeah. not Chinese intellectual property. And right now, no one cares, frankly, about Hillary Clinton. No one cares about Fusion GPS. No one cares about John Durham with false claims by Hannity that something major is going to happen so he can boost his ratings. People don't care about that. It's life or death right now. It's life or death. And we need to address this problem. Then we can take care of the Clintons and everybody else. Of course, the government's not going to do it. Uh, we're going to have to do it at, Free- at uh, Freedom Watch with our citizens' grand juries. But I've diverted all of our resources right now to fighting the Chinese on this and getting compensation for the victims in this country and other countries where they're being affected. Because we need to basically destroy this communist Chinese regime. It needs to be destroyed for the benefit not just of the world, but for the Chinese people themselves who have been living in slavery now for many decades. Yeah. Well, I agree with what you're saying, Larry. I hope there'll be an opportunity and an appropriate point to include not only the Chinese government, but some of these sinister internationalists, globalists, corporatocracy kind of uh, players who all position themselves in a way that would seem to benefit this agenda uh, wherever it's coming from. And uh, this is the real problem. I mean, you know, Trump mentions a therapy with this uh, hydrochlor, whatever it is, that drug for malaria, and immediately Fauci shoots it down, doesn't want to have any hope of anything that doesn't have to do with a forced vaccination of basically everybody on the planet. Um, It's a very, very sinister and dark future. Because again, we don't even necessarily need a government mandate that you have to have that chip. I think it could very quickly through corporate alliances make it difficult to have access to a bank account, difficult to have access to shopping, travel, if you don't have this chip and the ability to be scanned and proven that you're coronavirus free. We don't want to destroy the pharmaceutical industry. That's very important. But the reality is there was some truth to even what Bernie Sanders was saying is that they have a monopoly. They're the most powerful lobby next to the insurance industry. And of course, they play off of each other in Washington, DC. The prices are inflated for drugs. And yes, they're gonna benefit handsomely by this uh, virus and they're gonna make money hand over fist. So they need to be watched very carefully by someone. It won't be our government because frankly, they've paid off everybody in the government. And they are a force that can get out of control and do a lot of harm if they're not regulated properly. We need competition. Yeah, and you know what, just in our last few moments here, uh, you raised a point a minute ago that I wanted to address, that they wanted you to have this shingles vaccine. I did get shingles when I was uh, in my 30s. I was, you know, working really hard and soldering and inhaling probably mercury, and I just got a really painful case of shingles. But shingles is caused by the Zoster virus, and anybody who has ever had chicken pox or shingles has this Zoster virus in their body, and I suppose if you shoved a Q-tip up somebody's nose, down their throat, and out their sphincter, you might be able to detect it somewhere in their body. It's, uh, it's something I've been considering, Larry, that perhaps these doctors are able to test for something that is basically always there, and uh, how do we know that you know, coronavirus, it's a broad category of viruses. COVID-19 is what we're talking about. Some of this panic is being driven by the numbers on this map. And the numbers are just that, numbers. We don't know if this is real. And as I've been going around and looking at hospitals and mortuaries and things like that, I mean, I'm just one guy and I haven't been to every single site, but we're definitely not seeing results that reflect 
the fancy numbers lighting up on this website? We don't know. And you have to take everything with a grain of salt. And that's why I say we need responsible journalism, not jingo journalism, yellow journalism to jingle the money for networks like Fox News, CNN and MSNBC. That's what they're doing right now. And, you know, I, I take offense. I, I look at these hosts, big, broad smiles. We're not worried. They're making money like mad. They're walled off from the rest of the population. They built studios in their homes or wherever. And the American people are being left to burn in this in this process. But even whether this is as bad as they say it is or not, perceptions become reality. And the country is now in a panic mode to the point where families won't even interact with each other, a lot of them. And people are fighting with each other as to whether the relative goes to the store to buy food. You know, they consider that to be a death threat against the rest of the, the family. And and this is the this is the frightening thing about this. It it is dividing people in this country when it should be uniting people in this country. And I think we can all get united around the lawsuit against China, both the civil one and the criminal one. And I really I need your help right now. Please go to freedomwatchusa.org. We are small. We need to get bigger. We need to do the job of the Justice Department. And we we've come a long way in doing that already. Absolutely. Well, Larry, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the show. It's always a pleasure to speak to you and to hear about what's going on at freedomwatchusa.org. People can go there. They can download the complaints. They can read more about what's going on in these cases. And of course, they can contribute. It's a tax deductible donation there at freedomwatch.org. Uh, freedomwatchusa.org. I also want to remind people that they can sponsor this program. If you're watching every day, if you value the information, it's super important that you become a sponsor, even for just $2 a month. You're going to get access to a huge and constantly growing library of sponsor exclusive content. But moreover, you make sure that Crowdsource the Truth keeps going and brings you information that is not skewed by some unknown financial interest in the way that Fox and CNN, the New York Times, and all of these globalist run resources are. Larry, anything you'd like to say to our viewers well, before we go? Well, you know, tongue in cheek to some extent here, you know, watch your show, Jason. Watch our podcast. I have a podcast every morning on Radio America. It's blasted out. A radio show carried by 50 stations, also podcast on the weekends. Share it. Get the word out. You know, I, I put the golf channel on behind me <laughs> for make a point. <laughs> Watch CrowdStores and the golf channel turn off Fox News, okay? But even and the get, golf channel is yeah. advertising Prilosec. Everything is a pill, you know? They always want you to buy some kind of pharmaceutical. Well, yeah, you got to make your next putt, I guess. But, you know, <laughs> uh, at, least, at least it's entertaining. I don't find Fox News and the rest of them entertaining. I find them fear-mongering uh, to make money. And it, they're, they are the ultimate whores in the media today, the, the cable news networks. Absolutely. Larry Clayman, thanks for joining me once again. Always a pleasure to have Larry on the show. And thanks to everybody for watching. Have a great night. I'll see everybody tomorrow. We've got David Hawkins and John Cullen. So join us on Patreon and Subscribestar for those sponsor exclusive programs. Have a great night, everybody.